Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm really excited to be in front of you today and uh, actually, to be honest, a bit uh, impressed. Last time I spoke in front of more than 50 people was nine years ago at my wedding. So um, I work for a French company called Delaire. We build drones and we were actually the first one in the world to fly a drone uh, uh, over the site. So uh, that's our thing. But I'm here today to talk to you about why we are not restful anymore. And I'd like to start my presentation with a small video. This is a framework, not a software framework, sorry, but a real wooden roof structure. 100 meters long, 40 meters wide, 10 meters high. Huge. It's so big that it used to be called the forest because of the, the amount of trees involved to build it. So are we going to talk about carpentry for the next 20 minutes? Definitely not. But there are two things interesting in this video. First, it has not been shot with a regular video camera, but rather with a 3D laser scanner. It gives you a very accurate view of uh, a, a very accurate 3D model of your scene. And second, it supported the roof for 800 years. But now it's gone. Yes, you may have recognized Notre Dame de Paris that burnt a few months ago. No, I feel you understand why this 3D model is essential and it, gives, it will give precious hints to rebuild the cathedral. Well, when you did need to model your assets, whether it's a mine, a cornfield, uh, anything, or cathedral, you are dealing with huge amounts of data. And uh, it can be, uh, f for the example that we've seen, there are more than 3 billion points. That's on 500 points on the surface of a stamp. Needless to say that you won't be able to compute this 3D model on your laptop computer. So basically, that's why we built our platform, Delaire.ai. Basically, you give us raw files, whether it is drone photos, or laser shots, or any other relevant files for, to model your assets. We'll process it and give you the business information you need. But let's take an example. Imagine you're a gold mine owner, lucky you. And you need to know how much gold is extracted every month. So what you do is you fly your drone over your mine. It will capture thousands of images and you'll upload it on our platform. So we'll process it in something that is called the photogrammetry. Maybe some, some of you know what is it about and it, it will create a few useful files. First, you'll get a mosaic, what we call the author mosaic, which is a 2D map of your site uh, with all the geometric correction. And then you have uh, other files, but let's, uh, let's uh, see a small demo of what it looks like on the platform. So here is the mosaic which is like the Google map, with, but with a centimetric uh, resolution. And then there's colorful file, digital surface model. In fact, every pixel represents the elevation. And why it's interesting? Look at this big stack of gold here. I just uh, draw a polygon around it. And on the fly, we'll be able to compute the volume. No need to compute it in the back end or anything. Just because you have the elevation, you can have this. It is to say that it's very useful for mines. And after these two files, there's also uh, something else that is also useful uh, through the photogrammetry. It's the 3D model. 
automatically you will get uh, a point cloud, just like the cathedral before, uh, in which you can navigate. It's cool, but it's also useful because you can uh, rely on this data to add your own application. For example, we already implemented something that, uh, in this example, you can compute the best path for your trucks to, uh, to get the, le the least fuel consumption. But let's uh, go back to API. Uh, as you can see, we have thousands of images, thousands of files, gigabytes of files, like this one. And uh, we, if we can't uh, find it efficiently, access it efficiently, they are worthless. So that's why we created uh, what we call a data set. For each file, we associate every relevant properties. For uh, an image, it could be the acquisition date or even the, the location. But there are many, many more. Let's look at this example from the API side. So with our previous RESTful API, what did it look like? So first, we have a classic POST request create to create this data set with these properties. Then uh, we have something that is called the ingestion, which is done in the backend. So we have an internal process that will, for an image, generate a thumbnail to be displayed on the front end. But it could be for 3D model uh, tiling. Maybe some of you are familiar with this concept. We have uh, a point cloud that is uh, multi, um, that can have can be more than two gigabytes, and then we have uh, we generate very small chunk of files, and you can get uh, you can browse to this file uh, through the browser without uh, downloading all all the point cloud. So this is called ingestion. Then during the photogrammetry. Something also useful is that we can improve the location of each image because of the computation of this 3D model. So it would be a pity if we didn't uh, keep this information. So we improve, again, the data set and update the location. And finally, another example is the, the user through the front end who could update uh, the data set name. Can you see the problem here? We have, if we forget the first one, we have three different actions through, uh, that are done by three different actors, internal process, the, the end user, and another internal process. But we have one single endpoint, patch slash data set. If you're involved in authorization logic, you know that it will be complicated. So that's our first problem. Then let's go back to our gold mine. You decided to that was not your cup of tea anymore a few, was, you, few years later, and you sold it. So you go back to the platform, delete one data set, and then, well, delete everything. Well, we have to delete every single resource. So we have here, in our use case, thousands of requests inefficient, and so that's the second problem, in inefficiency for some use cases. But then, the next morning, you, you thought, well, actually, the new owner might be interested by all this data that I collected, so we need now to recover it. So what we did, we implemented a trash, just like on your computer. So the the end user deletes it, and then an internal process will remove it after an amount of time, for example, one month. Problem? RESTful API are mostly uh, um, targeted, well, they use HTTP methods. But here, we have two operations, two deletion operations, a, de a temporary deletion and a permanent deletion. How do we design it? with one single HTTP method. That's the third problem. So to recap, the problem we had, several actions for one endpoint, so 
very complex to, to handle the authorization logic. One request per resource, per resource, not efficient. And finally, HTTP methods are sometimes too strict and it uh, gives a headache to the API designer. So we decided to say bye-bye to our REST API. And please forgive me for the next slide. I couldn't resist. Rest in peace, rest. So what did we do? We thought, well, we have many, many actions for a single resource. So we decided to be action-centric instead of resource-centric. So what does it look like for our previous example? We have now four dedicated endpoints. Create data sets, update data, data set status, data set location, and rename data sets. Much easier to, to handle authorization. We can, uh, for the ingestion uh, uh, example, the second one, we can limit the API scheme to only this property and not to have to handle all this uh, combination. What does it look like for the deletion problem? Well, two operations, two. And see, for the delete data sets, we can handle the batch deletion. So it's much more efficient. We have one single request instead of several. And about the problem of methods, well, we use post, and we have the delete data set permanently to do the internal process. Something worth mentioning here is that uh, the delete dataset permanently is internal. Well, we have now a dedicated endpoint, so we don't even have to expose it to the public, public API. That's even better. So what, uh, what's our, uh, if we compare it to the REST API, uh, we have now one endpoint per action instead of one per resource. We use only two methods, POST and GET, instead of the nine available by HTTP. And same for status codes. You have 90 availables, and we only use six of them. So it's basically just much more simple. So. What we say, that we have the most simple API style ever made. Well, that's what our CTO says. But we are pretty happy with it. Our developers, well, were at least uh, a bit uh, afraid of this new kind of uh, style. But after a few months, it went fine. And even partners use our API, API happily. And uh, I think some of you in the audience might be skeptical and think that isn't it our good old remote procedure call? Yes, actually you're right, that's RPC style. We didn't invent anything. Is it old-fashioned? Well, we don't think so. Look, Slack API, they use uh, for their conversations and other API, verb, conversation list, leave, kick. So if Slack does it, if it can, we may be not off track. Dropbox, yes, same here. They even indicate uh, its uh, RPC style in their documentation. So why is it crucial for us to have uh, uh, our own style. If we recap the, the first example for the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral, the point club was nice, nice looking, very, uh, very, very nice. But uh, for the carpenter, it's not useful at all. What he needs? A drawing, a AutoCAD file. So, in fact, the point cloud was just uh, a step, a starting point to, to create new application. So basically, uh, at Delaire, we don't pretend to have the, 
the skill set for every industry. That's why we need to have uh, efficient API. That's, we are at the Platform Summit, so I guess everybody know, knows what is a platform, but it's essential for us to have uh, usable, efficient, and well-documented API. This last point is, the, is very important, especially for our new style, because we have many endpoints now, and we use uh, we document every single API through the um, open API uh, scheme, schema and uh, with uh, the help of uh, Rodoc that some of you may know, uh, we have a very uh, uh, nice looking uh, HTML documentation that, that's part of the success of uh, our approach. So um, I, I would state that uh, an efficient and well-documented API is better than a RESTful API. So, to conclude, I'd say if you think that uh, REST is not a good fit for, for you, then write your own style, along with a good, uh, a good quality documentation, developers will adapt. Thank you for your attention.